Ukraine grain sea exports to reach agreement this week. China's debt bomb looks ready to explode. Nord Stream 1 pipeline restarts gas deliveries. The world's most powerful passports in 2022. Baidu unveils new self-driving taxi in China. Tesla sells majority of its Bitcoin. World's gambling crown shifts from Macau to Las Vegas. Buenos Aires bans gender-neutral language. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funding News. It's Friday, July 22nd, and here are your top stories. Reuters reported that on Wednesday, July 20th, Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan said he wants a general agreement reached between Ukraine, Russia, Turkey, and the United Nations on a UN-led plan to resume Ukrainian Black Sea grain exports. Furthermore, Erdogan wants the agreement to be put in writing by the end of this week. Erdogan told reporters these developments on a return flight from Tehran, where he met Russian President Vladimir Putin. On Monday, Ankara said that a meeting between the four parties would probably be held this week. Erdogan said, An agreement emerged from the talks in Istanbul last week on the general outline of the process under the UN plan. Now, we want to tie this agreement to a written document. He said, We hope the plan will begin to be implemented in the coming days. Before the talks a week ago, diplomats said the details of the plan included Ukrainian vessels guiding grain ships in and out through mine port waters, and Russia agreeing to a truce while shipments move. Nikkei Asia reported that China's nearly 4,000 small and medium-sized banks with nearly $14 trillion assets are highly likely to fail soon due to the collapse of several small banks in Hunan province. By pure coincidence, when Hunan authorities were cracking down on the victims of bank failure there, authorities in Shanghai had conducted a secret trial of a former billionaire who allegedly controlled a medium-sized bank in Inner Mongolia and used it to fund various illicit schemes. Nike said that large banks in China have lent tens of billions of dollars to poor countries as part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. A significant portion of their credit portfolio is likely to become toxic as their borrowers are unable to service their debt due to the global economic downturn. If big banks themselves face rising non-performing loans from abroad, they will be less able to help bail out insolvent small or medium-sized banks at home. As the Chinese economy is now slowing down rapidly, the debt bomb is ticking much louder. DW News reported that on July 21st, after being closed for annual maintenance work for 10 days, the Nord Stream 1 gas pipeline reopened as scheduled early Thursday morning. The president of Germany's federal network agency, Klaus Müller, said on Twitter that the pipeline was running at about 30% of capacity and that this amount was guaranteed for two hours. According to official estimates, as of Wednesday, German gas reserves were at about 65%. A spokesman for Nord Stream AG told Germany's DPA news agency that the latest supply volumes were the same as before the maintenance period, corresponding to around 40% of maximum supply capacity. The European Commission on Wednesday urged EU countries to reduce their demand for natural gas by 15% over the coming winter months, and to give the Commission special powers to force their needed demand cuts if Russia severs Europe's gas lifeline. According to the latest Henley Passport Index, Japan, Singapore, and South Korea have the most powerful passports in 2022. A Japanese passport provides hassle-free entry to 193 countries, one more than those from Singapore and South Korea. Taiwan travel documents are ranked 34th, with holders having visa-free access to 145 countries. The figure is far ahead of China, which was ranked 69th, with access to 80 countries. Hong Kong's passport is the 18th most powerful in the world, while Macau's ranked 35th. The Henley Passport Index is based on data from the International Air Transport Authority. The index includes 199 different passports and 227 different travel destinations. Bloomberg said, as recently as 2017, Asian countries barely featured among the world's 10 most accepted passports. However, Europe's domination has gradually eased and Germany now trails South Korea. The UK is 6th with access to 187 countries, while the US is 7th with a score of 186. The 
BBC reported that Baidu has unveiled the next vehicle to join its self-driving taxi service, Apollo Go. The company said its new model, the Apollo RT6, has the real skills of a driver with 20 years' experience. However, autonomous cars currently still require a safety driver's presence due to relevant regulations. Despite this, Baidu says that one day the RT6 detachable steering wheel could be replaced by extra seats, vending machines, desks, or gaming consoles. Each Apollo RT6 would cost 250,000 yuan, significantly less than previous models. BBC reported that Baidu wants the RT6 to join its existing fleet in the second half of 2023 for a small-scale trial. Baidu plans to have 100,000 of them on the road at some point in the future. Baidu says its robo-taxis running on a trial basis in 10 cities in China, including Shenzhen, Shanghai, and Beijing, have given more than 1 million rides since its service launched in 2020. Other companies in the robo-taxi space in China include AutoX, backed by Alibaba, and Pony AI, which was founded by former Google and Baidu engineers and currently backed by Toyota. In a shareholder letter on Wednesday, July 20th, Tesla said, as of the end of Q2, we have converted approximately 75% of our Bitcoin purchases into fiat currency. Conversions in Q2 added $936 million of cash to our balance sheet. The electric car manufacturer disclosed in February 2021 that it had invested $1.5 billion in Bitcoin and subsequently sold 10% of its stake that April. Tesla said Wednesday its digital assets have shrunk to $218 million and that a Bitcoin impairment hurt second quarter profitability. Bloomberg reported that Tesla chief executive officer Elon Musk said on its earnings conference call that the company sold its Bitcoin to maximize its cash position. The head of research at crypto fund manager Valkyrie Investments, John Olskowitz, said rough estimates would place Tesla's Bitcoin sales at around the $30,000 price level. $218 million in digital assets remain on Tesla's balance sheet. The media reported that the price of Bitcoin has retreated from a record high of almost $69,000 to $22,928. Bloomberg reported that in 2019, gambling revenue in Macau was six times that of Las Vegas. This year, the Nevada gaming hub has edged ahead of its Asian rival as the Chinese-controlled territory grapples with the effects of Beijing's zero-COVID policy. While well, Macau's latest outbreak is easing, with just 10 cases reported on July 19th, compared with 146 cases at the peak, the neighboring mainland city of Zhuhai is seeing a flare-up. Gambling industry observers expect the virus rules to loosen after China's party congress later this year. Bloomberg said months zero COVID policies have caused Macau's six licensed casino operators to rack up an estimated combined loss of $478 million during the second quarter. Moody's Investor Service predicts a full recovery may not come until 2024 for Macau's mass market gaming, which has become the key contributor to casino operators' profit. This has become the case because Macau's once dominant VIP gambling has declined after China's crackdown on capital outflows and money laundering last year. The New York Times reported that the city government in Buenos Aires, Argentina, last month banned teachers from using any gender-neutral words during class and in communications with parents. The city's education minister said such language violated the rules of Spanish and stymied students' reading comprehension. Argentina's top education official criticized the rule and at least five organizations have filed lawsuits seeking to overturn it. The media said gender-neutral language is being increasingly introduced across Latin America by supporters who say it helps create a more inclusive society. For instance, instead of amigos, the Spanish word for friends, some Spanish speakers use amigues, and some signs that would say bienvenidos or welcome now say bienvenitas. But to some Spanish speakers, including many academics and politicians, the changes degrade a language spoken by half a billion people around the world. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us on Fun Day News. Let's make every day a fun day. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I'll see you next time.